So here's my faithful um, heat gun. I first reviewed this on YouTube, I think, around about November 2015. So uh, we're three years on. And uh, the other day I got it out to use and something strange, uh, you switch it on, there's no display here, the fan doesn't go. But um, strangely, if we turn the heater up, we can see the heater light comes on and indeed it gets hot. So that's even more strange as most reports say that the first thing to fail on these is the, the, the heater element. And that is clearly not the case. So we need to get inside and uh, take a look, see what's, what's going on. Clearly the first thing to do is to unplug the unit from the, the power. Now there are screws in the in the front here, but that would be to expose the uh, the heating element, I guess. Possibly what is more interesting. Uh, we slide this cover back. We have some screws here. Now I guess this end is where the the fan would be, which isn't working. So let's uh, let's get a look in there. And indeed, we can see that there's a motor there, uh, which is clearly going to be for the fan. Uh, I don't, I'm not able to pull that out any further. So I think we're going to need to take this rear cover off and see what goes on in there. So all that we're seeing in there is the uh, the cable strain relief for the power there, and obviously some circuit board for the controls. That's not really going to help us a great deal. I guess we go for broke and take this nozzle off as well. Yeah, so clearly we can see that that reveals just uh, pretty much as expected the, the heating coil. And I guess that's a little thermocouple or something at the end there. Uh, it simply plugs into this circuit board. Let's unplug that. Quite a neat little arrangement there. It appears that if this, this rear part is in, in two halves, so I guess the next challenge is to try and separate that. Okay. Just a gentle prod with a screwdriver. That reveals the internals. So I think it's time now to remove these screws and probably the the screws here that are holding the, the power cable in and take a look at the other side of this board. So with that cable clip removed, we can now take a look at the uh, internals. So I'm just going to take a look at this circuit board in more detail and we'll reconvene uh, once I've reached some conclusion. I've managed to find a circuit diagram online, uh, somebody that's reversed engineered the circuit but it uh, appears to be correct and as always there'll be links down in the description. This is what's not working for us, the, the heater up the top here we know is, is working. But what we have here is a, is a circuit, a little switch mode power supply. We go to the right there, we can see that it powers both the LCD display and up here is the uh, uh, voltage regulator that's driving the fan motor. So this is obviously not working for us. Uh, in the first instance, I'm drawn towards R1 here, which is a 1 ohm uh, resistor. So I think that's definitely worth, uh, worth checking out. Um, let's get back to the bench and uh, and measure that guy and uh, see what's what's going on there. So from the circuit diagram, we saw that this big resistor here uh, is common to driving both the LCD and the fan motor, neither of which uh, are active. So it's uh, definitely suspect. And looking at it now. If we look at the component itself, there is a very small area here where uh, the, the surface is flaked off, so clearly um, it's been getting quite hot. 
no other apparent damage and we can see the the code there uh, the one zero which indicates it's a uh, one ohm so let's just check it out with the meter now yeah so uh, 0.1 ohms for the resistance of the of the leads themselves and probing across the resistor it does indeed appear to be open circuit what I've done is to dig around uh, uh, we should all have a box that looks similar to this take components from faulty units and uh, stash them away against a rainy day but this this resistor that I found um, this probably has more more years than I do one ohm is indicated and it's a nice uh, chunky ceramic uh, resistor so um, that should do the job and if we measure it on our meter 1.2 ohms so we're in the right ballpark and it's the right physical size so let's get that swapped out see if we have affected a repair and as you can see we're back at the circuit diagram just replacing this resistor didn't uh, affect a uh, a fix unfortunately. Investigating further I've checked out all these diodes that's obviously a, a bridge rectifier that's rectifying the incoming mains voltage and I've measured at this point here and getting some 312 uh, volts which is uh, about right. Um, here on a good day we have 220 volts uh, so you multiply that by 1.414 and we get around 311, 312 volts I, I measured, so that's fine. Uh, obviously still this is, uh, is not, uh, not working. The most likely cause is going to be these transistors, so we need to take a, a closer look at those on the, on the board and uh, check those out. As we saw on the circuit diagram, there are these uh, two transistors. They're normally one and a half amp. 400 volt uh, switching transistors commonly found in these little switch mode power supplies and I've removed them from the circuit to do a final check on them but I was uh, I was suspicious um, when I looked at the back of hopefully we can focus on on these I'm not sure if it's obvious in the in the camera light but this one has a distinctive blue tinge uh, something that we've seen before when things get hot so obviously it has been running hot and the other thing that I noticed was that actually within the housing we have to be a bit of a bit of a sleuth a bit of a detective to uh, to sometimes uh, find out what's what's going on and again I'm not sure if it's if it's clear uh, let me find a little torch so yes, uh, where the transistors sit on the on the board underneath here, we can actually see some um, some little splatters of of, of solder um, where the the transistors have have clearly blown, and we'll just double check that with our our meter. So setting it to the resistance value, normally we would put it on to uh, diode test uh, to test the a transistor from left to right this should be base collector emitter so if we measure the base to collector we can clearly see that that's a short circuit if we measure it the other way around we still get the same reading and between the base and emitter is open circuit both ways and between the collector and the emitter open circuit and this guy is pretty much the same so it has a base to collect a short where it's blown and uh, it's now open circuit so we're going to need to find replacements for these guys uh, as I mentioned they are very common in uh, switch mode power supplies and I just so happen to have a bunch of them. Uh, being a, of a pack rat mentality, I uh, hardly ever throw anything out. This is an old PC uh, power supply. This actually failed. Uh, we can see clearly there the, the top of this capacitor is, 
and it's, it's leaked. It's leaked all over the circuit board as well. So that will be why I originally changed it out. And again, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see. There are in fact two 13007 transistors. Now the 13007 is just a, a higher ampage version. These are 13003, one and a half amps in a TO126 type package. This is a bigger package, but I think we'll be able to shoehorn it in there. And uh, these are, I think, three amps, uh, again at 400 volts NPN. So I'm gonna pull these uh, off of this circuit board and swap them out, and we'll have another test. So here we have the two transistors removed from the, the circuit board. So we're just going to check those out again with our meter on the uh, diode test. Again, open circuit one way, one forward voltage drop for a diode in the reverse direction. And using our other little test set. Yeah, so it's identified it correctly as a, an MPN transistor. Very useful device, this. And if we check the other guy as well. A similar result. So we can be confident that these are, are working. Uh, let's put them into the, the circuit here and do another test. As you can see, I've reassembled the, the unit. So uh, I did give it a quick test. And now indeed, uh, fan is working fine and obviously we can see the LCD and if we put the heater on now we see the, the temperature climbing rapidly and indeed is getting very hot which is what it's designed to do. So with the replacement of uh, a burned out resistor and uh, two transistors and all the parts being replaced from our scrap box, uh, we've effected a, a decent repair. I can now get on and do what I wanted to do uh, a few days ago, which is to replace a micro USB connector. So I'm going to be using this to, to desolder that. And uh, I've taken the, uh, the precaution of ordering up a new element. I've used this gun regularly for, for three years now, so uh, the writing's probably on the wall for the, for the heating element. I hope you enjoyed that and as always, uh, links down in the description.